My name is James Egan. I'm an assistant professor in polymer science at the University of Akron. So we produce over 300 million tons of plastic every year. These plastics mostly come from fossil fuels. Um, fossil fuels are a limited resource. We only have so much of them. We use them and ultimately we end up burning them to produce CO2. And this has led to climate change, greenhouse gas accumulation in the environment. Our research is asking, instead of going in that direction, and forming this carbon dioxide, can we reverse the process? Can we make plastics from CO2 so that instead of emitting it, we actually are utilizing it to make valuable polymers and plastics? Getting CO2 to react and getting it to go into a polymer is not an easy task. The reason that CO2 is the byproduct of industrial activity is that we've, we've sucked all the energy out of it. It's this really low energy molecule. And in order to go backwards and make something useful out of it, we have to put energy into it. And so what we are looking at is what kind of catalyst, what kind of chemistry, what synthesis can we do to engineer the reverse process with as little energy as needed. Other groups have looked at how to use CO2. This is a, a rich field. One of the key advances that we found though is that we are using the traditional polymer feedstocks. So in addition to CO2, we use molecules called olefins. Using high energy systems that can offset the energy of CO2 have been done before, but really it's these existing infrastructure that is so critical to our research. So we became excited in using CO2 as a building block for polymers because it allows the material to become carbon negative. We could actually put more CO2 into the plastic than it admitted. But we were also interested in what happens to the material when you do this. Does it still behave like traditional plastics or does it take on new properties? And what we found was that by incorporating that carbon dioxide, not only is the feedstock sustainable, but the material actually becomes degradable as well. So that if you lose it in the environment, it won't persist for centuries and centuries. It'll actually gradually be absorbed by the organisms. And so our research is very focused on how can we just incorporate a little bit of carbon dioxide? And then maybe a couple years later, a little bit more, a little bit more until ultimately all of our materials are made from carbon dioxide. If we can create value from that carbon dioxide, now there's an incentive to capture it, there's an incentive to use it, and there's value behind that. My favorite part of doing research is discovering unexpected observations. Seeing things that you just don't make sense when you first see them. And you have to test and reformulate your hypothesis and then ultimately arrive at something that you believe is truly representative of what's happening. And with collaborating with students and collaborators across the university, it becomes extremely fulfilling to develop new techniques, new methods, and identify these solutions.